This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on the basics of editing with Apple Final Cut Pro 10. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll explain what all the media import settings mean and how to optimize them in Final Cut. Any media that you import must go into an event, must. You cannot have media lying around. So you can specify where do you want the media to go. I'm going to put it in the media folder. Or I can create a new event and specify which library that event is going to go in. In this case, I'm going to add it to the existing event called media, which is why I selected media before I opened the import media window. Remember I said that Final Cut gives us two choices. It will copy the media to your library, unless you set up a custom folder, in which case it will copy the media to your custom folder, or it will leave the files in place and simply allow you to link to those files. For my work, because I'm always reusing media, I leave them in place. It doesn't duplicate storage, but it means I really have to pay attention on where that media is stored. For new students, I would recommend you copy them to the library and not change the destination because the media is then safely stored in the library. Yes, the library gets big, but you're not going to accidentally erase it. And if you want to copy it to the My Project Media, it will copy it, which means it's going to take more storage space, but all of your clips are now grouped into a single folder, which means archiving that folder, backing up that folder, transferring that folder to another editor becomes much, much easier than trying to figure out where the files are scattered all over your work. So if you're brand new to Final Cut, leave it in the library. If you're still learning Final Cut, create a separate media folder, and this folder can change by library. So each library could have its own folder, or they could all share, makes no difference and copy your media there. Keywords are something, I'm going to set this to leave files in, no, I'll copy it there. Keywords are something we're going to talk about next week. My setting is I don't use finder tags, but I do use folders, so I set that there. You can ignore audio roles, automatically does what needs to be done. This is where we specify whether we're editing camera native, nothing is checked creating an optimized file using ProRes 422. What I recommend for just about every edit is to create optimized media. And if you need to create proxy files because you're dealing with 4K, 5K, 6K images, log files with uh, raw files, or you're doing multi-cam editing, proxy media makes a difference. All you have to do is check that checkbox. And Final Cut will optimize and create proxy files invisibly in the background or just handle it perfectly. It's an extremely smooth media workflow we'll talk more about next week. When you're importing media, Final Cut can analyze it for color. It works. It's not great. I don't recommend it. It will analyze it for the number of people in the shot, close-up, medium shot, wide shot, one person, two people, three people group. It's one of those really great concepts that just doesn't work. It takes forever to analyze and it's not going to be useful. I mean, you're welcome to use it. It's not broken. I just find it of no value. So I don't check the top two. I do check the bottom three. This will listen to our audio and fix if there's a hum or there's a buzz or there's noise or the sound is too soft. It'll fix that. You can override it. We'll talk about that in audio. This will take if you record a stereo clip where the host is on one channel and the guest is on the other, that needs to be dual channel mono. Turn that on because it does the separation. And I use them for this webinar, for instance. And you remove silent channels. If you have a camera that records four channels of audio and there's only a voice on one channel, it will hide the other three channels to avoid confusing the issue. So let's bring in this clip, and let's bring in this clip, and this clip and then click Import Selected. And now our clips are imported into the browser. I click on any clip. I can skim it. We're just hovering over there and dragging. We've imported our media, and we're ready to start editing. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on the basics of editing with Apple Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at LarryJordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 285. By the way, 
Membership is a great value when you need to stretch your training dollars. Membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,900 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com membership. And thanks.